So you've tuned in to make a difference. After watching this video, you'll walk away with three ways to make an impact directly from your couch without having to move an inch. And to base these actions in something, here's an uplifting perspective on the 17 sustainable development goals, what they really mean for you and me, and how you can take action today to be a part of creating a greener, more fair, and more sustainable world. Welcome, you're tuning into A Better Future. It's 1992. The Cold War has ended and the world leaders now meet at the United Nations Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro. The goal is to join forces to achieve global sustainable development. And the result is Agenda 21, a plan signed by the then 178 member countries with a goal to achieve global sustainable development by the year 2000. Although shared by many, Agenda 21 also triggered protests and conspiracy theories by the right-wing extremists in the US, as it was very focused on collaboration and changing behavior. The right-wing extremists therefore consider it to be an act to crush the US independence and leadership, or in other words, crush their freedom. Fast forward to September 2000, New York, United States. Even though Agenda 21 targets weren't met, significant progress was made. All of the then 191 UN members now agreed on eight international development goals to be reached by 2015. We now have eight condensed goals measured through 21 targets, instead of four sections with 40 subpoints. These new goals mainly focus on the needs of the world's poorest, reducing poverty, hunger and disease, but also have a slight consideration for the environmental issues. So new vision and new goals. Did we manage to achieve any of these by 2015? Well, yes, some, but not all. For instance, global poverty fell from 36% in 1990 to 12% in 2015, which is quite a lot better than the targeted 18%. During the UN Sustainable Development Summit taking place in New York in 2015, the leaders of the world pointed out that better life on Earth is not only dictated by reducing the suffering of poorer nations. We had to have a universal, holistic and inclusive look at the sustainable development, defined already in 1987 by the UN as Development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Therefore, the UN decided on 17 sustainable development goals, consisting of 169 targets to be reached by 2030. These goals have become more implementable and important for all nations, not just the poor. The goals concern poverty, hunger, health, education, gender equality, water, energy, work, industry, inequalities, cities, consumption, climate, water, land, peace and partnership. The progress on these SDGs is reviewed every year in July at the United Nations High Level Political Forum. But before we dig into what that means, let's summarize. So we've gone from the end of the Cold War with a few goals, addressing a number of matters with limited international collaboration, to 17 goals with increased collaboration, a more exhaustive agenda for both global and environmental issues, and improved actionability for all countries. The vision is a world that is free from poverty, hunger and illness, where in every country there is sustainable economic growth decent work and equality for all. A world where all natural resources are protected and natural habitats are secured, resistant and sustainable. Amazing, right? Well, some of the criticism against these goals is the number and broadness of them. How can we remember and act on all of them at once? Will these sustainable development goals really help? And most importantly, what action can you take? Are you ready? Great, let's find out. The 17 SDGs encompass the environment, the society and the economy. Major subjects. We do however know that the environment, society and economy, the three P's, planet, people and prosperity, are all interlinked. In order to achieve sustainability, we have to take them all into account. But how, really? Enter the Swedes. In Stockholm 2016, a set of really smart Swedes at the Stockholm Resilience Center created a model for how the society, environment and the economy are interlinked. The model became a marriage of these three topics, represented as a wedding cake. Yummy, right? The cake model is quite similar to Maslow's hierarchy of needs for the individual, where the bottom section must be fulfilled to meet the upper needs. 
The wedding cake is, however, not meant for the individual, like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but for the civilization and the whole ecosystem. It recognizes how the ecology and environment is the foundation and the basis for everything else. Thus, the environment is the most important, which enables a functioning society, which then enables a functioning economy. And overarching all of these is relentless collaboration. So we now have five Ps. The five Ps are planet, people, prosperity, peace, and partnership. This is how we will look at and make sense of the Sustainable Development Goals, understanding how they are interconnected and how they affect each other. So, we have goals for the global issues of the environment, society and the economy, and one overarching goal, which is the partnership around them. The implementation of these goals varies from country to country, meaning that how each country tackles the issue depends on their own situation. Some countries, for example, fight hunger, while other countries will focus on ensuring that we eat more healthily and reduce obesity. All countries are, however, working with the food and hunger goal. Keep this difference between countries in mind as we move through the sustainable development goals, moving up from the most fundamental section to the top, explaining what they mean and how you can take action. In this section, we're concerned with the environment, the climate crisis and ecology. We talk about clean water and sanitation for humans, which decrease the spread of disease. Nature conservancy is of primary importance, ensuring that life both below water and on land can flourish. We are currently overfishing and depleting the oceans and on land. We are causing species to go extinct and decreasing our biodiversity by, for instance, illegal poaching, deforestation and global warming. We thus have to take action to protect nature through climate change solutions. We can improve our ocean conservancy by using more sustainable fishing methods, by eating less fish and by eating sustainable fish when doing so. Furthermore, doing what we can to protect the ocean life and help it regrow again is beneficial for everyone and is fundamental to combating climate change. We can improve our nature conservancy by eating and consuming more sustainably. Together we must also fight by learning how about ecology and making our voices heard to protect and nourish the wilderness and biodiversity that exists. If we exploit all land, it will be our demise. But there is something you can do about it, and it's coming up. Now, continuing moving upward in the wedding cake, we have society. Originating from nature, we have human society. In order for us to achieve sustainability and sustainable development, we must think holistically about how to develop our society. We must get all humans out of poverty and hunger. At the same time, we have health and well-being, focusing on both physical and mental health. Then we have quality education, which also enforces gender equality. The same equal rights should apply to any gender. Zooming out, we know that our cities and communities must also be sustainable, safe and inclusive. We have a lot of people living in slums, in cities with few open public spaces, without convenient access to public transport. This must change, but is it even possible? Let's see. Medellin, Colombia went from one of the most dangerous cities in the world to dropping the primate and reducing poverty. How? By implementing sheep, accessible public transport throughout the whole city, combined with public spaces at the end of each line. This helped people access new job opportunities and interesting culture throughout the whole city, which got both people and money moving. Second to last, we must also transition into affordable and clean energy, such as solar, wind and wave power, moving away from fossil fuels to reduce our carbon footprint and air pollution. While parts of the world are overconsuming energy from fossil fuels, 759 million people didn't even have access to electricity in 2019. At the same time, UN reported that one third of our planet used non-efficient and unsafe cooking systems. And lastly, in this segment, the Sustainable Development Goals were created to ensure that our societies are peaceful and inclusive. This means eliminating all sorts of trafficking, child labor, bribery, and killings of human rights defenders. At the top of the wedding cake, we have the economy section. The sustainable growth of economy will flourish if the environment and society is taken care of. In this section, we're concerned with humans' access to decent work with income inequality, sustainable development of industries, infrastructure, and innovations. As the economy is driven by consumption and production, we must ensure that we do so responsibly, meaning that we must not overconsume and instead think about the ways that we produce when consuming. 
Let's not stop consuming, but let's do it more responsibly and manage how much waste we produce. We purchase a million plastic drinking bottles every minute. Are all of these recycled or even necessary? We dispose of almost 5 trillion single-use plastic bags each year. Is this waste and pollution necessary? Or can we come up with better solutions that don't involve fossil fuels nor impact the environment as much? Maybe we should rethink our purchasing of products and clothes we don't really need. Is it possible? Can we change our behavior? Yes, we can. And we should. So we've learned about the background to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals and the Agenda 2030. The progress on the SDGs is reviewed every year in July at the United Nations High-Level Political Forum. We've also seen how the 17 SDGs can be divided into environment, society and economy. Ultimately, we've dug into each goal and, thankfully, we're making progress over time. Don't despair, but we can achieve that progress faster to reduce suffering and unequal living. So you might be asking, what can each and every one of us do today to make a difference? That's a great question, let's find out. But first, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. And for the next section, leave a comment which action you prefer and consider acting on. How to take action. We propose three steps that you can take today to honor sustainability, help the world reach the Agenda 2030, and to make a difference for a better future. Step number one, change your mindset. Mindset is everything. The way we think about things and what we dream about influence our actions tremendously. Instead of thinking about how the world is going down the drain, we gain more by focusing on how we can have a positive impact and what we can do to live sustainably. Focusing on the preferred future rather than dystopia will help us align our thinking and fuel us to take action. We recommend consuming more positive news about the positive changes that we are making. Watching YouTube channels like this one can fuel the drive for positive change. We also recommend looking into solar punk, which is an art genre about how we positively can merge humans, technology and nature. Don't give up, become inspired. Step number two, learn and listen. Read, watch documentaries and talk about what we can do to revert the climate crisis, to help nature and assist our fellow human beings. How can we improve our consumption patterns? How can we change our government's erroneous thinking and create collaborations that strengthen, not divide us? We're all in this together and we must create solutions together to make sure that the animals, our kids and their kids will have a beautiful planet to live on. Step number three, take small actions daily. Immediate, small, imperfect actions is way more valuable than delayed, often never executed perfect actions. Do what you can today to create momentum, which will fuel even more action and inspire others by your action. So as Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. So here's three actions you can take right now without moving. Number one, sign a petition you care about. Number two, download the app We Don't Have Time and make your voice heard. Or number three, share this video with a family member, friend or colleague. Together, we will make a difference. 